Welcome to the Fashion and Color Show, where we have dynamic conversations with designers and creatives influencing fashion. This show was inspired by our book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, that serves to preserve the history of black designers A to Z. Let's get into the show. So I am so excited, first of all, because I've got my friend, my brother, who I have always felt so much love from. I have got one of the best stylists in the world, let me just tell you, in the world, who has um, styled over 20, probably over 25 covers at this point, um, who has also made Hollywood Reporter's top list of power stylists. He was also HFR's 2018 Stylist of the Year and he is just a dope human being. On top of all of this though, he starts a line called Aliette, which is a beautiful, beautiful clothing line. I'm so happy to have you here, Jason. Brennan, thank you for having me. This is so good. Uh, you, you, you are amazing. You are the true testament of, you know, sending that elevator back down. Mm -hmm. I see what you do for people all the time. And for me, I'm sure on behalf of all of us, thank you. Thank you. Like, I feel like I got you in a hot seat right oh, now. Oh, let's do it, man. <laughs> let's do it. So for people who don't know you, right, um, I know you don't like to do this. That's true. But I need you to name drop for a minute, okay? <laughs> Give me like 10 people that you've worked with and styled. Oh, man. As a stylist, uh, I've worked with Issa Rae, Lizzo, Winnie Harlow, Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, Prince, Odell Beckham, Little Baby, man, Russell Westbrook. Uh, so many. There's so many. So many. Yeah. When I was looking down your Instagram yeah. this morning, I'm always like, wait, he's styling her now too? Yeah. And him now too? So many. Yeah. Like, that's insane. It's, it's right? True. It's when truly you think a about it, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And one of the things I remember, one of my favorite moments from any HFR show was when you accepted your award. Wow. Because wow. because your speech had half the room in tears. Wow. And um, I remember your speech was actually dedicated to your mom. Yes. And so I just want to go back because people have he just heard like everyone you're working with. Mm -hmm. He's also dressed <laughs> half of these people, half of Hollywood as well, like with his Sorry. own collection. Mm -hmm. But go back to kind of how you got your start in fashion. Man, that's a that's a great question. Uh, just piggybacking on the speech that you're talking about, I remember being in a barber shop, um, being cut by my brother Reggae, and he was like, "Man, like I remember it was raining." He was like, how, "He was like, how your day going, bro?" I'm, like, I'm good, man. I gotta write this speech, and for the next twenty minutes, I didn't even talk. I just wrote the speech, mm -hmm. and I remember. Reggae asked me, yo, bro, you good? Because I was crying while I was writing it. Mm -hmm. Like, when you have, like, I remember growing up, seeing my mom, like, never ever cry about things or be hurt by things or never ever say that she's messed up. Now, 20 years later, being a parent myself, I see her struggle, like, you know, I, I see the pain or even like I remember going back and looking at my mom taxes. See, she made like 12000 a year raising five kids. That's crazy. So honestly, to have that moment and to for you guys to even resonate with that speech truly means a lot because that speech was for her. That speech was dedicated to her. Like, you know, her sacrifice is the reason why I'm here today. And going back to my start, like, in the beginning, I used fashion as a way to like honestly communicate. Like it was a way I was able to express myself. It was a way that I was able to, you know, just be cool, feel good, you know, feel seen. And I had a lot of people who I admired at that time, uh, especially high school. You know, that was like the Vanson and Coogee sweaters and, and the Vizu and American Cup Prada Mori era. 
And I just remember like seeing Fabulous and and then this new artist named Kanye West came about and I was like, man, like, okay, I felt seen a little bit, but now I really feel seen. And my brother was just amazing. Like, you know, he he condoned my shopping habit, you know? In what ways? Like I'd be like, yo, bro, like, man, you ain't show you ain't show up to my game. You're like, yo, bro, what you want? Like, you know, like it was it was it was like yo, oh yeah, he paid me off for everything. Like all all everything I asked him to, he paid me off. And then um I had an uncle, Uncle Allen. He was he was fly. Like he was he he was he was like like in European fashion and he was just cool. And I used to go in his closet and raid it. Like I still have things that he's never getting back, but it was it was dope. Like you know to have that that many people who had style around you. Like you know I had my aunt who was on like more like cool things that are now like uh, that you would find in like a thrift store or a vintage shop. Mm -hmm. Like that that was dope to have so many different versions of style and everybody to me I still looked at them like cool. And then I went to college and it was the opposite. Uh -huh. Like, it was like, no offense to Juicy Couture Specials and Ugg Boots, but that was the era right. where every everything was like, let's not dress up. And so I was dressing up, going to school, and I was like, man, this ain't it. Right. So I applied for internships. And one internship I applied for was L Magazine, and I got it. And that was my start to fashion. I remember you told me this story one time that I thought was so dope. Uh huh. You were like, all the people at the magazine were like going out for lunch. Oh yeah. And Co tell that tell that story. Yeah, they were they were going to Kosi. Like you know, it was it was a reality check. Like me being an intern in '05, I think. Yeah, '05, being an intern and seeing like you you coming in, it, it's taking me a bus and a train to get there. I'm relying on the transfer. Like I, I couldn't afford for the bus and the train. I gotta, I gotta make sure I, I get on that bus mm -hmm. so I get the transfer to the train to go all the way to 50th Street. That's when they were on 50th and Broadway. And I was like, man, like everybody's going downstairs getting lunch. There was a cozy mm -hmm. that salad place. Everybody's going downstairs getting lunch. I'm like, man, I can't afford this. Like I, I have to go find like a dollar piece or something. Right. And it was only one dollar piece in the city at that time, so it was a, it was a walk, or I just didn't eat. So I remember one day coming home to my mom. And I'm like, Mom, like, like, could you uh, could you go to Costco or BJ's and, and you know buy me salad, and so so I could bring the salad to to uh, to my internship. She went, she got me the salad, and then I used to take the dollar or two that I had extra like for lunch. And I went downstairs and got like a piece of cozy bread, so like I could fit in in that world, mm -hmm. you know. That shit's sad. What do you think about it now? <laughs> <laughs> you you know what it is? It's inspiring. Oh man! Because someone else would look at that and go, "I don't have, I don't fit, yeah. so I shouldn't be here." You looked at that situation and said, "I don't have, but I fit. How?" Can I be here? I received that. Big difference. Like, and I feel like when I look at your journey and the things that you've done, because you transcended all race barriers when it comes to stylists. And you'll notice I didn't say the best black stylist, mm -hmm. like the best stylist, period. For sure. Because you are you are there, you know? And the the fact that you are where you are. Like you don't get there by not having grit and tenacity. A hundred percent. And so it was there way back then. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's something that's also could be nurtured in you. Yeah. Like you know, my my mom has that grit. Being from New York, you get that grit. Yeah. But you know, I think that tenacity, I think it's important. Like I'm never, I'm never gonna give up, and I, I, I'm even putting that into my kids. Like, like we can't give up. Like I told, I told my daughter the other day, I was like, "What's your last name?" And she was like. Rembert, I was like, yeah, Rembert can't give up. Like, like you know, that. you got you got to kind of nurture that in her because I want her to to keep going. Yeah. I want her to be strong. Like, and if she decides to quit, that's fine too. But you, you quit when it's when it's 
when it truly means something to you. Don't quit just because you're uncomfortable in the moment. Right, right. Talking about being uncomfortable in the moment and what you've been able to build, right? Because mm -hmm. I think from Ale, you went to... Um... I, went, I did a brief, brief stop, like, like in Harper's. So I applied for a W internship. W gave me internship and accessories. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to do accessories. By that time, I really knew my what my trajectory for fashion. I want to be an editor. I don't want to be an accessory editor. I don't want to be a fashion editor. So I applied for a W. They was like, we can't give you fashion. We'll give you accessories. Harper's was like, we we'll give you fashion. So I was like, man, I'm out of here. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Harper's. Literally, the week I started Harper's, W was like, oh, we got a spot in the fashion. W was my dream magazine. Wow. Alex White, favorite fashion editor. You had Camilla Nickerson over there. Um, back then, I mean, Shiona, Shiona Torini was a baby there. Wow. Um, it was just a good time for fashion. Like, and that magazine had like the, the posts on on fashion like they had a foot on everyone's neck so i just wanted to be in that world i want to be a part of you know that ethos and you know kind of put that more into my world that was the only magazine i subscribed to in college that's crazy w magazine yeah, w magazine was and the they one. used to come and it was so huge yeah. and i got it and it was like whew. it was magic like, yeah and, and you gotta think about it like as an intern you're not going on set Right. So only magic you've seen is when you see the clothes come in and like your eyes is like wide open. You're like, man, this is like Christmas. Like right. you're to see some of these pieces that you will never ever see in life. Wow. Like it was like it was a, it was for a young kid who's coming in this world and like W was probably one of the most inspirational places I've ever been in my life. Wow. Still yeah. to this day. Still to this day. Like I, I feel like I feel like I've been in a lot of places. You've been a lot of places <laughs> and you've seen a lot of things. Hundred <laughs> percent. So, uh, so okay. So, what does that transition look like from you? So, you're interning at W. Mm -hmm. um, what is that journey like from being an intern at a magazine to becoming a stylist? So, two, two. Mine was twofold. Okay. The first fold was it was this thing called BT Ripped the Runway. Mm -hmm. I don't know if remember? you remember it, right? Of course. BT Come Ripped, on now. BT Ripped the Runway was it. Of course. You know, Jesse Collins, shout out to you. Bring it back. We need it. BT Rick the Runway was the one, right? It was it. So June Ambrose was the fashion director one year. Wow. And so June Ambrose did this. Uh, this She was like looking for three up and coming stylists. And I remember I was at W and W was on 30, 40, 44th and 3rd Avenue. June Ambrose was working out of uh, an office that was on 56 and 6th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't afford a taxi. I couldn't afford a taxi. Mm. So, and it was like it was like 90 degrees. Back then we used to have these big portfolios and I brought my portfolio, I had a big wooden portfolio. I brought it to uh, a walk from 44th and uh, 3rd to 56 and 6th. Wow. Hot summer day. At W we only got 30 minute lunch. It took, it took me about. Wait a minute! It took How me, in the world did you make that I, work? It took me about thirty minutes to get there. Uh huh. When I get there, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in, come out, and I'm just gonna be thirty minutes late. The line was like an hour long. Wow. Went back to W two hours later, and they were like, where were you? And I'm like, man, like I don't know whatever excuse I made up, I made mm -hmm. up something. And then uh, probably like the next day. I got an email from June's team that I was chosen. I was, wow. one, of, I was one of the ones. And I ended up doing a BT Rick the Runway. W Magazine, the fashion assistant that I worked under, gave me an ultimatum. It said, either you do this or you do, uh, you stay here. And I chose, I chose uh, BT Rick the Runway for June. Wow. It was the best thing I've ever done for my career. Wow. How, what was that decision like? Was it hard? It was super hard. It was yeah. super, it was super hard. And you got to think about it. You you are, like, when, when it comes to your tribe, if your tribe never experienced certain things, sometimes they can't give you, they can't give you, uh, uh, like, a, an opinion on something that's, like, really probably the best for you. Right. Like it's it's not really gonna be as objective as possible because they just don't know. Right. And at that time, 
I'm talking about a, a fashion internship, but I'm talking about my career. Back then, nobody was into fashion. Right. So Nobody. Yeah, like, you know, my, my folks were telling me to go apply for the sanitation, FDNY, right. and yeah. NYPD, like, like, get a city job. They got great benefits. Right. Like, they, were, they, weren't, they weren't telling me to, like, yo, like, intern here or go with June. She's the biggest stylist. She can help your career. Like, it was none of that. Mm. Like, it was, like, honestly, it was me figuring out on my own. How did you know, though? Because that was such a hard choice. You know, people work forever to get, like, an internship at a top fashion magazine. For sure. And you had sacrificed so much to be there. For sure. And, like, how do you know? How did you know to make that decision? It felt right. Okay. It felt right. Like, uh... It just felt like uh, it felt it felt real. It felt like true to me. Like I I knew fashion 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 is important for me, but music and culture is also important for me. And I knew that with June, with that, I could do it all. Right. Like and I don't have to compromise who I am. Right. If I would have stayed in fashion, I feel like I, I it would have been too much compromising. Mm. And I don't want to compromise. Mm, love that. So you end up working BET Rip the Runway. I ended up working BET Rip the Runway. Crazy thing is, during that time as well, like right before I left W, uh, a friend asked me to drop off a piece of gar like a garment, a dress with them. Again, a rainy day. I don't know why it's all these rainy days, <laughs> but it was a rainy day. They asked me to drop off a garment. I dropped off a garment. And a stylist was was styling the shoot, and I'm like, like, you know, I'm an upcoming stylist, blah blah blah. This person have no assistant on set, and the person offered like, do you want to assist me? Like today? that same day, same day. Wow. When I say the person, you're gonna be like, speaks to them because that's who they are. It was Warrior Vice. Oh my gosh, he's coming. Love Warrior. <laughs> he's that's, gonna be on the show too. That's my favorite person. <laughs> Man, that makes so much sense. Yeah. So Worry was like, "Do you want to assist? Do you want to assist me?" And I was like, "Yeah, bro." And then um, I remember a few, few, like few weeks or a few or a month or two went down the line, and I saw Worry was working on um, one of Alicia Keys' album packaging, and he asked me if I want to intern, and we were. We like he was his whole setup was in the Lower East Side, and then when I was at uh, the uh, I was at W Magazine, and we always send things out. Like sometimes we send it back to the brand. That's what we're as an intern we're in charge of, like you know checking in, checking out. Mm -hmm. And it was an attention to worry vice, and so that was the first time where I was like, man. W Magazine is shooting this look, let's say look 17, from head to toe to appease their advertising, advertisement. And then Worry is getting the same look 17. He's breaking it up, probably putting Alicia Keys in a pair of door knockers with some Tim's on and some, some cheap jeans to make it more her. Right, right. Or some fitted jeans to make it more her. Right. And it's just as effective. Right. And I was like, man, I want to be this. Like, I don't want to be this. I want to be this. Right. Like, you know, it's it, it's it's identity. Right. It's character. It's truth. So that was the first time when I was like, man, like, I'm okay with not being an editor. I'm cool with being a stylist. If this is what a stylist is, I'm cool with being a stylist. Wow. Because you're basically telling... A story. A You're a storyteller. Yeah. That's what you are. Yes. 100%. So when you're approaching, like, how do you, when you're working with a celebrity, mm -hmm. you work with, I don't know, a hundred of them. Too many. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> when you're working with them, like, what's the approach? Like, how do you go in and are you going in like with curiosity? Are you going in like kind of already having a vision for them? What's your approach? I think every everyone has a vision for themselves. 
Okay. And so I think understanding is the best way of truly uh, making something special happen and being collaborative as possible is also important. Mm -hmm. And so I go and I preface everything with like, man, before we even work together, I want to, I want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. Like, because if our energy is not aligned, we're never going to be aligned. Right. Like, like, I don't need to think the same way you do. I don't need to like the same clothes that you like, but I do need to like you. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. And good humans. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. We want to work with good humans. It's the most important thing. Yeah. And f for the beginning of my career, I didn't have that choice. Like, you know, I didn't have the autonomy to say, I don't want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Now I do. Right. And so I'm going to utilize that option. Absolutely. As you should. Yeah. As I should. And so that's, that's, that's my big thing is like, I don't want to meet you with your team. I don't want to, I don't want to hear what your team thinks of what you like. I don't want to hear what your team feels about our approach. I want to build a relationship with you. So this is huge. Because people who are watching may not realize a lot of times celebrities have a full team. Too many. <laughs> and you never get to that person. True, true. Right? And there yeah. are so many gatekeepers. 100%. That that person has to really want to work with you mm -hmm. in order for you to be able to say, no, I want to meet with them. Yes. Without the person. you. With, without you. Who's emailing. Without, yes. Yeah. No, that's huge. Yeah. That means you've gotten to like. For, for sure. I mean, I, I, I think um, there's, there are a few stylists who who build talent and who has built talent. And it's okay to be a good stylist, but when you build talent, that's when you are a great stylist. Some may say even an excellent stylist. Right. And I'm in, I'm in that world. You're absolutely and, in you that You know, world. and so I help build talent, like. So that investment is not easy. Because building talent, that attracts deals. 100%. That attracts opportunities. That 100%. attracts revenue 100%. to the person. 100%. And it, it also, if you build a talent right, it, it attracts authenticity. Yes. And sometimes, like, when talent, when you work with some talent who may not know themselves yet, uh, you... By you working with them and building with them, you get to help them control to the world who they are, you know, and put out to the world, you know, sometimes even the best thems. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we're, 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 we're not always our best self, right. you know, but you have a team to help you become or stay your best self. What's been one of those moments for you, like your favorite moment as mm -hmm. a stylist? Hmm. Favorite moment as a stylist. Or have you had one of those moments where you go back and you go like, 10 year, 10 year old Jason would never believe oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, it's a <laughs> lot. Uh, it's, it's, every, it's everybody who I admired when I was younger. Like, like working with Puff, like that was like, come on, man. You, like, <laughs> like bro, like you, you, you probably the reason why I act the way I act, B. Right. You know, listen to like, you know, listen to Usher, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, Lil Kim, and then them looking to you as as a stylist, it's crazy. Like, you know, like that was like those those are probably like the big moments in my career where I'm like, nah, this can't be real. Like wow. like this person knows who I am. Wow. You know? Wow. It's 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 it's, it's dope. Where is where are some of the places in the world that styling styling has taken you? Man, it's taken me everywhere. I've been to like Sydney, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Kosovo, Paris, Rome, Mafi Coast. Been to Milan, London, L.A., Mexico, Jamaica, Hawaii. Like I, I feel like I've been. So many places. You've been so many places. Let yeah. me tell you something though. Next yeah. year in Paris, do you remember that year y'all had like that? Like it was an amazing photo. Yeah. It was like all the black stylists and creatives in Paris. Yeah. This was a couple years ago. Yeah. I was like, I 
gotta get in that photo one year. Yeah, that that that, that was dope. I think that was a, uh, uh, I think Rachel Johnson, yep. Keisha McLeod, they put yep. that on. Yeah. Um, that was that was a dope. That event. was a that dope was that Lavino moment. Yeah. We're gonna have Keisha on too. Oh, Keisha's dope. Yeah, right. I'm so excited. So you're styling, you're doing this at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And while you're at the highest level of styling, you decide to start a line. For sure. Crazy. It's crazy how it came. So like, tell me how that came yeah. about. So I was styling a, a client for Emmys. And she was wearing a custom dress. And she looked at me and was like, how come I'm not wearing your dress? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know. You didn't have a line then? No. Okay. This was September, probably like four years ago or five okay. years ago. Mm -hmm. So last month, like four or five years ago, I was like, I don't know, I'm gonna work on it. Next week, after Emmys, I get an email from the client. It was like, hey, what's going on? What's going on with the line? I'm like, oh, I'm working on, I'm working on it, you know, working on it. The week passed again, another email, like, yo. What's from going the same client? Same client. Yo, what's, Can you tell us what it is? Yo, what's going on with the line? Uh, responded. Probably like two weeks later, probably around this time, um, we have a job and it's in Santa Monica. And as soon as I get to set, she's like, you playing around. Like, you know, like you're not doing it, you playing around. I'm like, actually, I've been working on it. She was like, let's grab dinner. And I'm like, okay. So her, myself and her publicist, we grabbed dinner. And she was like, you know, more than likely, I'm probably gonna be nominated for award season. If I am, I wanna wear your dress. I'm like, yeah. I was like, word, that's dope. Three months pass, two months pass, and she's nominated. And I get a phone call like, so I'm wearing your dress. Make the dress, first dress I ever made. <laughs> Make the dress. Uh, I believe it's it's crazy. I remember these days. I believe it's January sixteenth is what the, was the date, and we have a fit in probably like January fourteenth or January fifteenth. And I pulled all the dresses because I'm a stylist. Right. And I'm like, yo, she put on the dresses. Everything. I was like, it was cool. And I was like, I got these other dresses. Like, do you want to try it on? She was like, are they your dress? And I was like, no. She was like, this is what I'm wearing. Wow. Uh, Client was Issa Rae. How did I know that? Yeah. That is so dope. Bet on black, you know? That is so Issa. She's special. She is special. Yeah. Wow. She's special. So she wouldn't even try on the other dresses. At all. Wow. At all. If they were my dresses, she would have tried it on. That is so crazy. She's special. She is special. I mean, that just gave me chills. Yeah. And so that was the birth. Of Elliot. That was the that was the birth, and then a month later, I uh, I showed her in New York Fashion Week. Two days after that, um, my brother Law he put it on Zendaya, mm. and that was just like the catapult of just just kept going. Wow, wow, that is so dope. Yeah. And the thing is, your brand has like such a clear aesthetic. Oh wow. I've received that. It's like, it's so clear. Like I have a white dress from, I, sh I never showed you a picture of me no, in this white I've dress. Never seen okay, it. okay, I look really cute. It's like okay. a mini dress. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that every time I put on that dress, like I just feel away. Oh, wow, that's good. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, yo, I've never seen Brandon say Yeah, Hollywood, I, I have a, I have a okay. white dress I that, that I love. I have to find a photo. I wore it, um, my sister turned 50, and we celebrated in Dominican Republic. Oh, wow. And I wore it for her 50th I can't birthday. wait to see it. Yeah, I have to see you a picture of it, but it's very cute. Okay, so you start this line. Mm -hmm. How in the world are you balancing a full collection, which, by the way, is sold in, how many stores are you sold in? Uh, we're sold in Bergdorf, Neiman, Sachs, Nordstrom, Shop Bob, Moda Operandi, and Rent the Runway. Do you know? Okay. Do you know how hard that is to do? Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. It's, I'm like, that is not easy to do. It's, 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 and it's tough. 
you're running a full because running a design business is is one of the hardest things I think you can do. I think it's the most difficult thing on earth. It's one of the most difficult things in the world. And people don't realize that. They just think, oh, people are designing, their clothes are in these stores. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the most difficult things For a sure. person can do. And so you're styling, but then you're also like running in the house. Whole yeah. house. Yeah. What is that balance like? Like how do your how does your team come into play? My team is probably the most pitiful in both both sides. Like um like you I think like as as a stylist, that's probably the biggest focus because I have a lot of clientele and like yesterday we shot a like yesterday we shot a cover we had to be on set like 8 a.m. Wrapped at four. My assistant then went to the office, then to the airport to fly to Toronto to do a, a fit in this morning. Like I have a fit in probably like an hour after this, and then I have to make it to FedEx by 9 p.m. to ship out a client's clothes. Oh my gosh! So it's like it's like three clients today, and that's like this is an easy day as a stylist. As a designer, I try to speak with my team every single day about 10 a.m. And we just, production is probably like the biggest task at right. this point. Right. And it's just, it's a lot of production calls to make sure that the business is right, the bills are being paid, receivables are coming in, and, you know, we're on time for certain things. Right. Because, because if you're not on time in fashion, forget man, it. Man, if you if you know time, they want a discount. <laughs> they want all they, the things. They don't want to cancel it. Yeah, all that. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it is really really difficult. But you're managing it all. For sure, you know. I, but I'm taking my time, and even with my sales director, her, her and I have combos. But I'm like, I'm not in a rush. Mm-hmm. Like. I'm not in a rush. Right. And, I, and that's, a, I also understand that's a privilege. Right. But I'm not in a rush and I, I'm able to scale as slowly or as quickly as I need or want. No, that's amazing that you're able to do that. And you also have to manage a family. For sure. That's, that's probably, <laughs> that's probably one reason why I'm happy this strike exists right now because right. I get to take my I take my kids to school every morning. Wow. And there's days when I get to also pick them up. I'm able to do homework. I'm able to eat with them. I eat with them probably every single day. And that like those moments are when you find out like the little things that 100%. they won't tell you cuz I'm you know when I pick my daughter from school, I'm getting all the drama. So and so did this and, and for a while, you know, I had someone else picking her up and now I'm getting all the mm -hmm. the important things. Oh, that's good. The things that are important to her. So yeah. no, I, I feel really good about that. So I cannot have you on the show without addressing the women or men who are watching this. Of course. How do you approach like if you had to give somebody an advice, some advice on how they approach what they're gonna wear? Oh wow! What, like, where does that start? Like, what you're gonna wear to whatever it is? Like, what do you what do you need to think about? Um, I think personally, my approach to my style yeah. is honestly, it's more than anything, it's comfort. Yeah. Like you know, I want I want to be comfortable, and I'm gonna be just me. Right. And I feel like a person if I'm speaking with a client. I was speaking to anyone and they told me that they had this event and they want my advice on style. I would tell them, you know, what do you want to say to the world? Mm. Like, you know, and then work backwards from there. Like, if you want to say I'm powerful or I'm strong, like I would tell you, you probably go get a, a Sergio Hudson blazer mm -hmm. or a Sergio Hudson suit. And, you know, and if you want to be effortless with it, I would tell you put on a t-shirt with it. If you want to be fashion forward, I would tell you to put on a turtleneck or like a blouse. But if you tell me like, man, I want to be effortless and cool, I may tell you go get a pair of R13 jeans and wear a vintage t-shirt you have in your closet. Mm. So it just depends what you want to say to the world. Like you have to find that, find that out first before you find out your style. Uh, how did I know you were going to say something like that? Well, that's crazy. 
I knew you were going to say something like that. Like, it's like what you want to communicate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I think we're in the age, uh, we're in the, the generation of being you. Yeah. Like, I think the only way to resonate with, especially with social media, is to show the good, the bad, the highs, the lows. Yeah. And so figure out for you. Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking to young people and they're trying to figure out, like, how do I get in this industry? Mm -hmm. What advice? Because I know you're getting hit with DMs oh, left and right. Young people the future, man. They the ones. <laughs> Like, I'm telling you, I'm like, man, tell me something. Because right. y'all know. Right, they know. They know. They and they're sure. It out. Yeah. They're like little business people. Yeah, because my generation is the broke generation. Uh -huh. We're the ones with all the information and just broke. <laughs> <laughs> like, it makes no sense. Uh -huh. But th this next generation, man, they're not scared to, to validate themselves. Right. And I love that they celebrate small wins. Like, like usually a person, like, you may not do a dinner for a, a, a Vogue.com write-up. They're going to do a dinner for a Vogue.com write-up. They're going to do a dinner for the Shade Room post. Yeah. They're going to do a dinner, dinner for their friend tweeting them. Right. They're going to do a dinner for Kanye West liking a picture. Right. Rihanna giving a follow. It's a dinner for everything. Right. And they validate themselves. Right. They're not waiting for the masses to validate them. That's so good. And so I think the youth... They got to figure it out. Like we the ones who waiting we for waiting for imprint and and our peers <laughs> to say, "Yo, you're you're doing amazing." No, right. I woke up today. I'm doing I'm doing just fine. Right, right. You're so right about yeah. that. I love that. Uh, do you have a lot of young people that work with you? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I I invest in a lot of young people. Yeah. Not invest monetarily. I'm talking about time wise, like. I want them to win. So if they got questions, hit my line. Yeah. If if you if you need support with something, if you need me to just connect you with someone else, I may not know everything. Yeah. I think it's important for us not to just live in our world. Right. You know? Like I may not ever step in their world, but it doesn't mean that I can't be one of the people to connect them with someone else who can support their world. Right. Like that's important. That's super important. But you also have that heart. Yeah, Jason, for sure. you have such for a sure. heart to give back. For sure. Like, you really, really do. You are one of the people in fashion. I mean, there's a lot of them. I tell people all the time, fashion has been so kind to me. And um, you were one of those people same, that really accepted me with open arms. And I feel, I feel the same way. Um, and I think I have the same sentiments where fashion has been kind to me. As well but I know there are a lot of people who don't have that right so I would never invalidate how they right feel or right. felt right but I know for me fashion has always been kind like you know my mentor is probably one of the greatest humans on earth yes you know I love that Jason I'm so 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 grateful I'm, to have you on this show Brandis, I you, don't, you, don't under, you don't I, understand <laughs> no man like like you Look, this is you, yours. You, look, you are and here, you're going to be in volume two, by but, the way. But look, you are here giving people things. This is you in real life. Like, you continuously give and pour into people. Thank you. Thank you. And I wrote in there, too. Oh, man. You, you got to look at it right quick. Open it up and look at it. Fashion in Color, volume one. Wow. <laughs> I mean, every single word of that. Wow, that means a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Like you, what you've been able to do, I look sometimes and we don't all, we don't get to talk all the time, but I look at what you're doing and I'm just like, man, go. I got my pom-poms in my hand. I got my Elliot skirt on and I'm like, go. Thank you. Like you're killing it. Thank you. You are too. Thank you. Man, it's, it was beautiful being at the Apollo. I was so, I was so, I could barely see anybody because it was so dark, but I saw you. I saw you. And too. I saw Warrior. And I was like, I feel good. Yeah. I feel good. Thank you special. so much. Thank you. Truly. I love it. Love you, lady. So that's a wrap for this episode of the Fashion and Color Show with Jason Rembert. Jason, where can people follow you? You can find me on um, Instagram at, at Jason Art. R-E-M-B-E-R-T, Jason Rembert. And where can we shop the line? You can shop the line at aliatny.com. And that's spelled? 
A L I E T T E N Y dot com. Love it. So excited. We're all going to shop the collection. It For is sure. absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, if you want to work with him as a stylist, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Jason, for being Thank here. you so much, Brandis. Awesome.